name's Heather Malcolm, and we're expected to say something about ourselves, so I'll tell you that I've done some strange things in my time. <laughs> um, it's hard to believe now, but I was actually once an extra for Scottish Valley, and I have hunted the Loch Ness Monster. But uh, no job has ever been stranger and more wonderful than being a community writer, community worker, with the possible exception of being a writer, of course. When I was writing as a hobby, I thought I'd write the kind of book I like to read when, I, when I'm on holiday, a crime thriller. Uh, so I set out to create some strong, clever characters. Uh, the trouble is that these strong, clever characters developed their own ideas about how the story should be told. Uh, and uh, that convinced me that I should go back and draw on my community work experience to help me work, to help me to write. So now, Rough, uh, which is my novel, still has crime in it and it's still a thriller, uh, but now it's mostly about the Penfold family. Uh, they're Romanies, and they're well-respected and uh, powerful in their own community. Uh, but they decide to come off the road so that their teenage children can have, uh, have an education. One of the strong, clever characters who has emerged from this process is Lorraine, and she's the daughter of the family. And her main job seems to be to keep her brothers out of trouble. And as things get worse, she develops an uneasy but strong relationship with a local police officer. And I hope that these two will be clever and strong enough to sustain a series of novels in which they work together to get justice for those who are unable to get justice for themselves. This extract from Ruff, Ruff covers the part, uh, part of the teenager's first experience of school. They've already been victimised on the bus on the way to school and their day is about to get much, much worse. By the time they reached the school, Bill's right eye was swelling. The left lapel of Rab's blazer was torn off and blood dripped steadily from his nose. Lorraine was white-lipped and stiff with disapproval and disbelief at her brother's behaviour. All three were marched directly to the headmaster's office by the bus conductress, whose carefully applied makeup hid a soul of steel and who had been known to use her ticket machine as a weapon to quell Saturday night windows. They was trouble right from the very moment they got on my bus. She, the conductress's finger, trembling with outrage, indicated the de defiant Lorraine, hit one of the girls, and then he, she pointed now to Rab, who was snuffling, snuffling distractedly and trying to contain his nosebleed, attacked another boy. No, there was no provocation at all. He just grabbed him out of his seat and dangled him right over the stairwell. Could have killed the poor laddie. And then this Vickian and her attention turned to Bill, who was standing tall and staring straight ahead. Joined in, shouting and pushing at that poor terrified laddie. I had to stop the bus and get the driver to sort it out. I'll make an official complaint about this. The headmaster nodded to the conductress and then turned to the children, who were by now, by now pressed against the wall of his tiny office. He prowled the small area. He declared that he had thought long and hard about whether to allow children like them into his school, whether they would lower the standards of morality and behaviour. He turned and paced in the other direction. But he was a generous man, a modern man, he said, and had decided that he would take pity on them and allow them in, despite his many and grave misgivings. He shook his head in displeasure. His jaw slapped silently, and he was in danger of dislodging the few stringy strands of grey hair combed over his glistening scalp and secured there by grease and sweat. He placed his faith in him, he said, believed in them, and they had let him down already. This, he declared, was a very poor start. And then he crouched so he could look into the face of each child and shouted, a very poor start. <laughs> 